Hello everyone, uh, my name's Steve Gill and I've been working in or for co-ops for oh, 25 years almost, probably slightly less. Uh, and it was my birthday yesterday as well, just to make you aware. Thank you. 21, thank you. So I, uh, I own a software company called VME and we're based in Scotland and in Malta, which is where I live with my wife, somewhere hiding around there. Where are you? There you are, down there. Um, and basically we've been trying to convert it into a multi-stakeholder co-op. Uh, but we've been struggling to raise money, which I heard a few times over the last couple of days, so it's a fairly common problem. Um, so when I looked into it, it's, it's an endemic problem, basically, across the world, and especially for platform co-ops. So, in my opinion, lack of finance is the reason that there's no co-ops in the top 10 market cap companies in the world. And I think we'd all agree there's a massive wealth inequality uh, problem in the world as well. Um, and I think that's a major cause of poverty. So there's 7.4 billion of us on the planet and uh, 6 billion of us live on 10, uh, sorry, less than $10 per day. Uh, and you might have heard the stat as well from Oxfam, 82% of the wealth generated last year went to the top 1%, which is 74 million people. And the bottom 50%, which is 3.7 billion people, got nothing, so no increase in their wealth uh, last year. So I think the problem is capitalism, and you probably a few people would agree with that. Um, but the problem here is that it ensures the majority of the wealth generated every year ends up in the hands of the few. Uh, because the companies that are generating this new wealth uh, are owned by the 1%, as you can see up up there. So if there's more co-ops here, uh, the wealth would be more fairly distributed. So, for example, perhaps towards this, you can see on the right-hand side, 74 million, the 1%, and then there's the 3.7 billion which is the 49% and then the 50% that previously were getting zero. So that's maybe something that we could try and, uh, and aim for. However, we're not going to see co-ops in the top 10 unless we find a better way to finance startups, co-op startups. So just like Google and finance, uh, sorry, Facebook and Google were financed properly when they needed it most in the early days, uh, we need to find a way to finance startup co-ops without making the 1% uh, richer. So unless we find a way to give those in poverty access to be part of success stories like Facebook, um, we're not going to solve the wealth inequality problem. So just as an example, if instead of going for VC money, Mark Zuckerberg uh, had found a way to take just one cent from everyone that's in extreme poverty, which is 836 million people, um, their share would now be worth $7 at the peak, which was a few weeks ago. Um, and what's more is they would be earning uh, 50 cents a year in dividend, which is not a bad return on, on, uh, on one cent. So I had a dream. This is what my staff call me. So we basically built a platform co-op to do just that. And people live on less than $10 per day. That's almost 6 billion people, and LAN is one of them. The world makes enough money each year to get LAN out of poverty and to save for retirement. The problem is, 82% of that wealth generated last year went to the 1%. The bottom 50%, which includes LAN, got nothing. This is known as the 1% problem, and it is the main cause of persistent poverty. How can LAN make money to get out of poverty? Co-ops. Co-ops are just like companies. They make money, but are owned by people like LAN. With more co-ops, more wealth goes to the 99%. But we need to fund them. Co-op Exchange solves this, an app where everyone can invest in co-ops. $1 invested in Facebook would have become $200 for LAN. Imagine that multiplied by hundreds or thousands or millions. The end of poverty. Welcome to Co-op Exchange. So if we can take this model, and if we can scale it up by allowing all 7.4 billion people on the planet, 
um, to invest in co-ops, then we can solve the money problem to create new co-ops, uh, and hopefully we can, uh, we can solve part of the poverty problem as well by allowing everyone, not just the privileged few, to be able to share in the wealth that's generated. For the 1%, there are lots of ways to invest. Savings, investment funds, stock markets. But LAN is not welcome at these places. LAN is one of the 6 billion people that lives on less than $10 per day. That's why LAN downloaded Co-op Exchange onto her phone. She chooses how much to invest from as little as one cent. She can invest in co-ops from all over the world or in a co-op fund which pulls money from people like Lan and invests in lots of co-ops on her behalf. Lan is happy that her investment is helping to support co-ops, creating jobs for people like her, not making the 1% richer. What's more, Lan is entitled to a share of the co-op surplus each year. One dollar invested in Facebook would be earning Lan two dollars every year. Instead of being trapped in poverty, Lan is now increasing her wealth. The end of poverty. Welcome to Co-op Exchange. So the, the new co-ops funded also generating sustainable jobs, as most co-ops actually do. So we're solving two problems at the same time, a win-win. And just to give you a little example here, we came up with a, a real co-op alternative to Facebook, see what it would look like, uh, funded through Co-op Exchange. Uh, something like this. Steve Book where complex AI algorithms only allow photos of Steve to be uh, uploaded. So. But, uh, but seriously, the app's been developed already. Uh, we're testing it internally within the team. I, and hopefully, we're going to launch it in a test mode shortly. So uh, you'll all be able to join in and uh, experiment just as we're going through the licensing process. This picture was just before I went for a haircut, so just to, uh, just to clarify that. But that's when I went to MFSA, and that's the local licensing body in Malta where we live. Um, and we're going through the process with them to be completely uh, accredited across the whole of Europe. And then there's a step on from there with different uh, financial authorities. Hopefully this will be quarter one next year when we're looking to launch. And then after fiat currencies, dollars and euros and, and uh, so forth, um, we're going to start the process with the Maltese authorities. Who here has heard of Malta? Good, 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 good. So Malta's been called the blockchain island because they brought in legislation recently um, to enable blockchain startups and, uh, and so forth. So we've talked with them about what would be required. And the idea is, regardless whether you like crypto or not, we would like to at least enable... Uh, people to be able to use crypto to invest in co-ops and to allow the co-ops themselves to choose whether they want to just take fiat currencies or one currency or uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever you want. So, uh, we've had some good support, um, support from the Maltese Prime Minister and his team. Um, and I messaged him this week uh, about one of the subjects and uh, disturbed him because he was just about to stand up in front of the UN General Assembly. So. <laughs> But he replied within two minutes. I was quite, quite impressed with that. Um, and we're also, just to add to this, for next month we're going to the ICA conference in uh, Buenos Aires, where we're going to be presenting. So you mentioned, uh, where's Felix? There he is. We mentioned uh, the ICA and engaging with them, and so we've pushed quite hard to try and get them behind this. Um, Co-op fund is just an idea. It's an idea that mutuals that could actually... Uh, a, you know, professional people that can decide what to invest in. So you invest in the mutual fund and it invests in co-ops on your behalf. So hopefully that'll be a whole ecosystem that we can grow. Um, and then once established and running in Europe, once we're accredited in Europe, then the intention, as I mentioned, is to engage with the local financial authorities across the world and grow co-op exchange, basically. I just like this example. Lan was being exploited, making shoes for $1 per hour. So Lan and four friends decided to start a fair shares worker co-op. Co-op Exchange helped Lan produce a business plan, and her co-op was listed on the app. 5,000 people from all over the world invested, and in return, they got investor shares. This gives them a share of surplus, but no vote. Only the founders and employees can vote. This stops the 1% taking control. With the money raised, Lan opened the factory, won big contracts, and employed lots of people on a living wage. At the end of the year, Land's co-op made a surplus. 
Instead of going to the 1%, the money was split between the founders, employees, and investors. The employees got 70%, the investors 20%, and the founders 10%. Soon, Lan was opening factories all over the country, employing thousands of people. The end of poverty. Welcome to Co-op Exchange. So you can imagine to run this isn't cheap. Put quite a lot of money into this. Um, so the business model is like any stock exchange, where you take a, a small commission on each trade. Um, but the big difference is that because our mission, we're a co-op, and our mission is to help eradicate poverty. So our idea at the moment is that any trade under $10 would be completely free. And we would allow down to one cent, literally one cent. So the idea is that we're giving people control of, of their own money and what they want to invest in. So that's the game changer. And that's it. You can check on Facebook, Twitter. We've also got a LinkedIn page as well. And uh, I'll be chairing a session this afternoon on raising money. So anyone who wants to come along can talk more about it. Thank you.